Code Crew is a nonprofit organization that teaches kids and adults to write software. We do that in a number of different ways, from directly working with kids in the K-12 system, as well as directly training adults, but also we train teachers and we also advocate for legislation for computer science education. Code School is a six-month boot camp and it is a full-time program and participants in the program learn full-stack web development and they come out of the program with a portfolio of about three to four projects that they have built throughout their six months. We have actually expanded to go directly into schools as an elective class, like you would take an art class or a music class. So we're in elementary schools through high schools, and in our high school program, we can do CS Foundations all the way up to AP Computer Science. We also have exposure events like the Hackathon and Hour of Code, just to get those in the K-12 space, underrepresented individuals in the tech field, to get them exposure to the computational thinking and computer science skills. Not only are we directly teaching kids, but we're also training teachers to teach kids in their respective schools. Uh, that, and as well as we've been successful at getting legislation passed around computer science education. You can take kids out of poverty and move them into the middle class, and that's how this city is going to prosper. If you like what you hear and you want to support the cause, consider becoming a donor today. There's no better way to improve the state of the world than to make sure that we have racial equality. We need to win on the court, but that success means nothing if we don't stand for something. We all have an important role to play. We all can do more. We want to bring awareness to issues that members of our community are facing. Economic opportunity is empowerment. We need to change where we invest and who we hire. We gotta provide jobs, we gotta walk the talk, we gotta provide mentoring and training. A good education and a good job literally saved my life. Open up that ecosystem. That ultimately will create lasting change. Not just in the front office, but also the vendors. Through procurement opportunities, through construction opportunities. Empowering people, removing the false and horrible barriers that have been put up. We're all created equal, and the reality is we're treated differently. Change needs to be sustainable. You're either part of the solution or part of the problem. Look for ways to learn and grow. Commit to create a level playing field. Recruit interns from historically black colleges and universities. This is the time for us to bring out the best version of ourselves. Basketball is what we do. Making a difference in our community is what we're all about. When you do business in a community, you give back to that community. We must financially invest. Addressing the underlying educational and employment disparities that exist. Sports in general have an incredibly unifying power. Equality. Diversity. Let's show people what love is. There is so much momentum behind this movement. We cannot allow it to slow down. We can use our platform to amplify important voices. Make absolutely sure we're doing everything we can to promote racial equality and opportunity for African Americans.
I was first introduced uh, into computer science when I was in high school. My first experience with uh, technology was when I was very young, about six years old. It was part of our curriculum at the school I went to. There I made my way into computer science class and I loved it so much that I ended up double majoring in both theater and computer science. Growing up as a kid in the inner city, I never learned thing about coding and it's so important. <laughs> All of my, my girlfriends, I think, have taken a computer science class, and I'm the odd, I'm the odd person out right now. Having access to technology, and, and for me in particular, being able to code, was a multiplier. I wanted to do computer graphics. I wanted to be a graphic designer. And when people found out, they laughed at me, and you know, all these things. And I'm like, man, I don't care. I think it's cool, and you know, I'm learning a lot, and some of my friends have jobs. I mean, the opportunities are endless for somebody who's getting into computer science because that's a, a job that's in high demand right now. We have all different types of people who work in computer science. We need the participation of more women, more people of color, to provide a different perspective and a different lens on which problems matter and how we should approach these problems. It's not just programming. It's not just building things. It's an entire different way of seeing the world. There's a way that even when you're coding, you can help make this world a better place. And it's a really fun place to be right now. I hope you guys want to be entrepreneurs. You want to have your own business. You want to create an opportunity for your family. You want to create your own app or your own platform or whatever. And I'm here to say today that you guys can do that. Computer science is for everyone, literally everyone. Uh, some people think you'd be a genius to like get it. Science. Just go after it. We need diverse teams of people in order to make products that reflect of what our world looks like. It's not just a means to an end. It's this thing that gives us hope to solve every problem that the world potentially has. We're on a mission to help change the face of computer science. We're going to learn to code together, bring the Good evening. I am Meka Egwekwe, Executive Director and one of the co-founders of Code Crew. And I bring you greetings from the University of Memphis UMRF Research Park. And before we get started, let me emphasize to everyone that everyone here present has been fully vaccinated for COVID-19. And I encourage each of you to also get your vaccinations. With that being said, uh, allow me to welcome all of you to Code Crew's inaugural Excite Awards. Uh, we are thrilled to, to present tonight a number of great speakers as well as uh, great presentations that you'll see tonight from world-class individuals. Uh, and we're honored to recognize these, uh, the, this one particular com company as well as these two outstanding individuals uh, that, and they, as they uh, share with us about their contributions to excellence in computing, information, technology, and engineering. Uh, with that, so welcome, welcome, welcome to our inaugural event, event and allow me to now introduce our co-founders at Code Crew, Petya Grady and Audrey, Audrey Willis. Uh, we'll start with uh, Petya with a few opening remarks. Hi everybody, Petya Grady, I'm a co-founder of Code Crew and current chair of the board of Code Crew. We're so excited for this evening and we're so excited that you're joining us tonight to celebrate the unique contributions of individuals who are blazing such a unique path in our industry. 
we are so honored and so proud that they are now forever connected to the history of our organization. Um, it's a big moment for us and we're very excited about that. Um, when we started Code Crew six years ago, um, Audrey and Mecca and I had an opportunity to go through a startup accelerator here in Memphis. And as part of that work, we were asked to spend some time defining the future of Code Crew. If we could have it our way and Code Crew could become the organization of our dreams, what would that look like? And when we were going through that exercise, I think we were a little bit annoyed because we really wanted to just start teaching classes. We're so passionate about what we wanted to do. Um, but I'm so glad that we actually went through that exercise because it really allowed us to define what, what our hopes and dreams for Code Crew were. We wanted to build an organization of true impact. We wanted to have, we wanted to build an organization that makes real difference in the lives of real kids here in Memphis. We wanted to create opportunities for kids who are typically overlooked and underrepresented in technology. We wanted to be leaders in tech education, not just locally, but also nationally and globally. And we really wanted to partner with the best in business organizations such as, I don't know, FedEx or Netflix. And here we are today. It's just so fun to be able to celebrate so much growth and such incredible success in just six years. Um, this past year has been a remarkable year for us for so many reasons between the pandemic and this racial, uh, racial justice awakening that the nation is going through. Code Crew has had so many opportunities to show what we're capable of. And as leaders of, co of course, we're always preparing for moments of crisis. We're always studying organizations that, ho that go through difficult times and come on top. But how amazing is it to actually be part of an organization that not only survived this pandemic, but has come through it with so much growth and opportunity and success. And we are so grateful for all of you for your continued support and can't wait to share more about these successes with you in a little bit. Thank you so much, Petia and Audrey. So six years ago today, um, Mecca, Petty, and I started out as familiar friends and ended up as co-founders. It was a hot summer in Memphis, Tennessee, and we went through a startup accelerator here, here um, with StartCo. And that summer, while all working full-time jobs, um, not only did we start this organization, we started a nonprofit, and we were teaching all the same summer. Um, I will say it was one of the most impactful summers of my life. Um, it was one of the most humbling experiences, not only to start an organization, but directly impact the Memphis community. And through that work, not only were we able to create this organization, but we were able to provide children here in Memphis with high quality computer science education, um, which was happening, but not to the scale we needed it. Um, and since then, uh, over the past six years, not only have we been impacting those children that are here in Memphis. We've expanded the programs and opportunities to now impact adults and educators, and we span that um, touch and span of control all the way to the halls of legislation in the state of Tennessee. We sent children all the way to Washington, D.C. to compete in technology competitions, and Coker even has a facing on the other side of the planet, which was unimaginable to us at the, at the time when we created this, but we're obviously making a miraculous impact um, one that we could not have imagined at the start of this. And although the work is not done, not nearly done, I am so proud of Mecca and the amazing leadership that he's provided and his willingness to uphold the organization and this dynamic team that we had that has supported um, the growth and these dreams and aspirations that we had just to basically bring computer science to Memphis. Um, we've been embraced by some dynamic organizations and company, not just here in the Memphis area, but far beyond nationally and globally. Um, and this organization has so much uh, left to do, and we're just so excited that we're stopping today to pause, to look at our successes, embrace um, the people that have supported us, and look towards the future. Speaking of the future, uh, we've got a number of exciting things ahead uh, with respect to our vision. Uh, we, our teacher training has, uh, is going to take off. 
Uh, a, a teacher training for us has been primarily focused here in Memphis, but we have uh, increasing opportunities to engage in, in opportunities for, to train teachers in other states around the country. And you'll see more of that from Code Crew uh, in, the, uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, as well, uh, overall, we'll, we'll be impacting, uh, increasing our impact beyond Memphis. Uh, in addition, we're going to keep our foot on the gas pedal with respect to uh, legislation, especially here in our home state of Tennessee. Uh, we were successful two years ago at getting Tennessee to finally have a statewide plan for computer science education, and, uh, and now we're working hard to ensure that every high school in Tennessee at least offers a computer science class, just like all the neighboring states uh, of Tennessee currently do today, uh, and, and, and as well as uh, provide additional funding for teacher training. Uh, from the state level. Uh, lastly, lastly, uh, we are um, we are ex excited about our adult coding boot camp, which uh, uh, has a number of expanding uh, partnerships with our employer network that we are thrilled uh, about because our coding boot camp has been directly impactful on real lives. Young people have come into the to this adult program averaging about $15,000 in salary and coming out averaging, uh, averaging $51,000 a year. So uh, more than tripling their income. We want to pour gasoline on that successful program. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll just say that uh, we are, we are, we are excited about our vision and speaking further about our future. Please uh, allow me to invite Kia Jones, our Deputy Executive Director, to share some additional insight. Good evening, everyone. I'm super excited about tonight's event, no pun intended. We are actually turning six years old today, as Mecca, Petty, and Audrey mentioned. Six years ago, they launched this organization with a mission and a vision to provide computer science to students in Memphis and Shelby County, and they have been executing on that vision flawlessly. As the current and new Lee Form Deputy Executive Director of Code Crew, I'm excited to be working on our communications and marketing and fundraising for the organization. And in that role, I got to, as of today, officially unveil our new logo for Code Crew. We wanted to make sure that Code Crew had a responsive logo and one that continued to represent everything that we do when it comes to computation and um, computer software. And so today, we're happy to announce that this logo will effectively go live today for Code Crew. And so with that, I will pass things back to Meka um, to have a conversation about Code Crew's updates. All right, well, and thank you very much, Keila. And not only are we thrilled about our new logo, uh, we are thrilled to be applying it uh, in some upcoming events. Uh, first of all, uh, we are excited that the NBA Foundation chose Code Crew and the Collective Blueprint to partner uh, for our adult code school to train a new generation of African American software engineers. And so uh, that, uh, that uh, program actually, applications are open right now, and uh, that program starts June 14th. And we're, we are so excited for that opportunity because, again, uh, uh, it's transformative for these careers that start at $50,000 a year and go up from there. Uh, in addition, on May 15th, we will be celebrating uh, Code Crew. Uh, we celebrate the Hour of Code twice a year. Uh, we'll be doing that May 15th uh, with uh, students where they're learning about uh, new and interesting things while celebrating uh, Grace Hopper and her accomplishments as uh, one of the great pioneers in computer science. Uh, in addition to that, starting tomorrow, our, our signups for our summer programs will open tomorrow, May 5th. And so uh, if you are interested in uh, a, a wide array of topics for your kids, from robotics to mobile apps to, to even cup coders for the youngest ones, uh, as young as kindergarten, uh, uh, all the way up to 12th grade, we've got opportunities for your children to, uh, to participate in Code Crew this summer, and which we're very excited about. Last, last summer, was, we were forced to do it virtually. We learned a lot. We actually uh, doubled our size, and so we're excited to engage uh, on uh, that level in and above again this summer. Uh, last year, we actually launched something unique for Code Crew, which was our first international engagement. We partnered with the Tariq Black Foundation as well as the as well as Coliseum Sports out of uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, 
to bring 25 kids in Memphis and 25 kids in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem together to build sports tech businesses under what we call the Global Sports Tech Youth Challenge. This year, that youth challenge is expanding. Uh, from August 2nd through August 4th, we'll have not only kids in, in the U.S. and kids in Israel, but also kids in Nigeria, Rwanda, and Belgium. And so we're excited to be expanding now to five countries for that exciting international event. Uh, this fall, we are hopeful that conditions with the pandemic will allow uh, us to resume our in-person classes uh, in, in the schools that we directly serve here in the Memphis area and beyond. So uh, we're excited about that because we, we hope and trust that all of you and, and everyone uh, in our country will, will recognize the importance of these vaccines and, and make that a, a reality for kids today such that we can also get back to in-person computer science learning. Uh, we've been doing this for virtually for more than a year now. And lastly, I will share that we are excited that the CS for All organization has uh, uh, reiterated its commitment to Memphis. Uh, we're hopeful that uh, the pandemic conditions will allow the CS for All Summit to happen right here in Memphis, October of this year, where hundreds of people from around the country, from different organizations around the country will converge on our city to uh, emphasize the importance of com their commitments to computer science education. So, uh, so thank you so much for this opportunity to share these updates and we, we will, uh, next I, I give it back to uh, Keila and we will, uh, we will uh, proceed accordingly. Thanks, Maka. Y'all, we have a lot going on. Maka, Petty, and Audrey said that we were pressing down on the gas and we are full speed ahead, y'all. It's a lot going on with Code Crew. NBA Foundation, Code School Collective, we have Hour of Code coming up on the 15th. We have summer programming launching. We, we have a lot going on, and we want to make sure that you all are a part of it and join us for these amazing events. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce everyone to our keynote speaker. Tonight, we have Megan Smith. She is an award-winning entrepreneur, engineer, and tech evangelist, CEO and founder of Shift7, a company working collaboratively on systemic, social, environmental, and economic problems finding opportunities to scout and scale promising solutions in, in a solution maker and engage proven tech forward, open shareable practices to drive direct impact together. Smith served as the third US chief technology officer and assistant to President Obama from 2014 to 2017, working on issues from AI, data science and open source to inclusive economic growth entrepreneurship, structural inequalities, government tech innovation capacity, STEM and STEAM engagement, workforce development, and criminal justice reform. Smith spent over 11 years as vice president at Google, leading new business development and including acquisitions of Google Earth, Maps, Picasa, she led Google.org, and later co-created Women Tech Makers and Solve 4X. Earlier, she was plant Planet Out CEO at General Magic, where she worked on early smartphones in Apple Japan, board member of MIT, Vital Voices, LA Olympics 2028, Think of Us, co-founder of the Malala Fund and UN Solution Summit, algorithmic justice, ad, justice advisor and member of the Council on Foreign Relations and the National Academy of Engineering. I present to you, Megan Smith. Hello, Code Crew. It's incredible to be with all of you. Uh, I am honored to have an opportunity to just share a whole bunch of different ideas and things that really, I think, relate to what you guys are achieving. And what I want to talk about today actually is code and crew. And I'll explain why. And the way I'm going to do that is I have these images and I'm going to like rapid fire go through a lot of different quick stories. And my main focus is to talk about collective genius. Collective genius means we're like, have everyone in our community uh, doing what they're passionately wanting to do and we're accelerating each other. And that's the way that really we can include everyone in the future and have the kind of vibrant, thriving, sustainable future that we need. Um, and I wanna start with a crew. I wanna start with uh, thinking about NASA. This is astronomy night at the White House. 
And so, you know, we know a lot about astronauts, and so we we're having fun looking at, at, at space and looking at this history. And uh, it was awesome. Um, everything from food innovation to navigation to all the things that it takes to work together in a crew, both the crew that flies, but also the whole crew that gets this done. And I wanted to share something from history that in the Rose Garden, we had not only the NASA commercial crew, which actually uh, just recently landed uh, on the station, crew two, crew two is up there, um, when they were getting ready to go with SpaceX as we moved to commercial space, but we also had some of the earliest navigators, American navigators, uh, the Hawaiians, the Hokulea team, and you can see the star compass on this image here. Um, and this is Jenna, who's part of that team. So thinking about both our most ancient explorers who are currently live using these tools and the Hokulea team at the time was uh, on, on an amazing expedition as we are also looking at space. Uh, this is them with the myth buzzers, both uh, our, our navigators uh, from the Polynesian islands and our space navigators. And the thing that this, the, what I want you to notice from this is that human intelligence in the time of artificial intelligence, that human intelligence, uh, what we are capable of doing, it far exceeds anything that, that really sort of compute is able to do in, in narrow AI. And that really working with each other and accelerating each other is the fastest path to and really solving some of our greatest problems using some of these technologies. This is the Hokulea. Some of you may have seen Moana. Uh, they sailed around the world and they did it with no instruments. So imagine 10 of us here on that canoe in the middle of the Pacific, which way do we go? And humans can do that. And they did that. They sailed around the world in this way. And these are the, some of the young master navigators as they were in training. And when they came home to Hawaii, they had a grand challenge, just like you guys do, hackathon. And so the students had done hackathons across a couple of weeks looking at how to help the Aloai Canal, which is a polluted um, river area or watershed area behind Waikiki, you know, similar to challenges that we've had with the Mississippi in the past. I'm from Buffalo, New York, where, where our river was on fire, Cleveland's river was on fire. When I was a kid, we had extraordinary environmental challenges as we face today, also with climate change and environmental justice issues. And uh, so learning to get out of these challenges is part of the innovation and co-crew is a big part of that way of thinking, working together, being on a crew. Uh, and, and having a great time. Ignore the audio. I'm going to tell you just here, these are some students. And they're having fun making this plane that writes itself. So think about today. Humans, machines, code, and data are coming adjacent, right? This is uh, uh, one of my favorite things. I got to do the acquisitions of Google Earth, Google Maps, et cetera, when work worked with these extraordinary teams at Google. They came in and this was, uh, uh, Lalit made this tool like Wikipedia for drawing yourself on satellite imagery and the people in Lahore, Pakistan added the metadata for themselves and slowly drew their town. So think about what we can collectively do. So we did, did an event with President Obama where we were looking at frontiers of personalized frontiers, like personalized medicine, personalized learning, local smart cities, national AI strategies, global with environmental challenges and opportunities for green energy and interplanetary. And this is exciting. And yet at the same time, one of the things we note is that sometimes we have biases where one group gets to do all this fun stuff and the other group gets kind of uh, stereotyped, left out of history, sort of dissuaded from being part of this amazing future where we need all of us. And for the employers in the room and the innovators in the room, we know from the research that the more diverse, the broader your team is, you just make better stuff. You get more revenue, more profitability, you get better um, creativity and everything. So if we include everyone from our community in our core teams, we're just gonna do better together. Um, and I wanna jump into history because we found some history about this woman who, you know, the Mercury 7, they used to call her the seven and a half. Our Captain Ed Dwight, who was uh, selected for the early NASA crews, but we haven't heard much about him. You know, we didn't hear a lot about Dr. Marchbank, who's an expert in uh, high altitude flight, or here's Margaret Hamilton, that's the code she wrote. She wrote it for uh, the Apollo command modules, the lunar lander, Skylab, and she's there with the team, uh, looking at some of the landings and some of the other people in the team. And I want you to note that 
um, there's a broader set of humans in that picture than we usually get to see related to Apollo. The good news is Margaret uh, is now a Lego. Uh, so I am sharing this image because when you watch TV, this is a data set about media. So the skinny one in the bottom is children's television. So you might recognize some of those movies. And the blue is men's lines to women's lines. So in 2000 films, which is the larger graphic, we see the men's lines to the women's lines. And so we're kind of making ourselves hear men and not women in our media. And that's what's starting to happen in our meetings and all around. So we want to know that there was a Mercury 7 and a Mercury 13. We also want to know that people protested the Apollo 11 launch. Uh, this is Ralph Abernathy and the mule trains. And the mule trains originally came from Marks, Mississippi, right near you guys, uh, for 1968. Um, and what they're saying here is, we are excited as Americans to go to the moon and can't we also work on poverty? Can't we also work on school lunch? Can't we also work, you know, if we can make Amazon packages where we know where every package is, you know, in FedEx where you guys are, why don't we know where the kids on the border are? Like, let's get Americans who have different skills working together and you, let's use code for any topic. Why are we biasing it to certain topics? And so I look backwards to see forwards, Katherine Johnson who calculated us on all our space missions to the moon. I, uh, this is Ada Lovelace who invented algorithms. Uh, she said, I wish to bequeath to the generations a calculus of the nervous system. And she did her work looking at our future at the same time that Darwin looked at our past. She also has cool hair, looks a little bit like Princess Leia. You know, we've heard about um, movies like The Imitation Game where they crack the codes to, to listen to the Nazis um, and decode those, uh, those radio broadcasts. And so we've heard of uh, Alan Turing and uh, Joan Clark, but we might not have known that the Duchess of Cambridge's uh, um, Kate, her great aunt and grandmother were code breakers at Bletchley Park, and that women were a big part of inventing computers at the most elite level. Grace Hopper here, Rear Admiral in the Navy, being the one who uh, invented coding languages. That the Macintosh team was relatively gender balanced with Steve Jobs, and he also had the person who had a baby here go home for dinner. Jane Addams won the Nobel Peace Prize for inventing social work and she used data science for a wise city, not just a smart city. And that there were chemistry labs and people working on water quality. This is uh, Ellen Swallow Richards. Ida B. Wells is a data science pioneer, you know, really being uh, focused on Black Lives Matter in the 1800s and really working to show us what we were doing using data science and journalism. Here she is with Nikola Tesla, and I put them together because at the Chicago World's Fair, uh, Ida and Frederick Douglass protested to try to have an exhibition hall of all the extraordinary inventions, innovations, and others who would have been there, um, and that didn't happen. And so at CES, we're missing people on the stage. So we're just repeating these histories, not knowing that the truth is that everybody's been amazing the whole time, and that crew includes all of us, and code could include any topic. So we look at things like the Sustainable Development Goals and this agenda from the UN and innovators who are all over the world, uh, people making floating fab labs in the Amazon instead of cutting down the trees. You know, these are entrepreneurs from, from 2019 and uh, this is the Ghana Bamboo Bike Company. You know, look how beautiful this is. They don't have a big steel industry, so make it out of bamboo and create an ecosystem around. There's innovators, this is Boise, just like Memphis, uh, Gaza, Afghanistan. This is an incredible movie about young innovators solving problems with water quality. All over the world is Wakanda, like all the innovators working together and we have to welcome each other into it. Whether we're Native American innovators, this is some of our MIT work from Shift 7 or island innovators, work from uh, the White House of getting all the tech meetup organizers and people working on things like Code Crew, um, to work together and get the employers, new kinds of training, the mayors and the tech teammates in town to organize. We went all over the country on a tech jobs tour, just like George Washington Carver went to solve challenges around um, getting people to rotate crops. Peanuts is actually nitrogen fixing the soil. And so these are people, you know, in those innovation festivals, speed mentoring we can do with each other. This is Oakland. You know, all over the country, we moved and we got to work with amazing people. And you see some of the Curve Crew teammates here who we met up with. And one of my favorite
and innovators who are all over the world, uh, people making floating fab labs in the Amazon instead of cutting down the trees. You know, these are entrepreneurs from, from 2019, and uh, this is the Ghana Bamboo Bike Company. You know, look how beautiful this is. They don't have a big steel industry, so make it out of bamboo and create an ecosystem around. There's innovators. This is Boise, just like Memphis, uh, Gaza, Afghanistan. This is an incredible movie about young innovators solving problems with water quality. All over the world is Wakanda, like all the innovators working together, and we have to welcome each other into it. Whether we're Native American innovators, this is some of our MIT work from Shift 7 or island innovators, work from uh, the White House of getting all the tech meetup organizers and people working on things like Code Crew um, to work together and get the employers, new kinds of training, the mayors and the tech teammates in town to organize. We went all over the country on a tech jobs tour, just like George Washington Carver went to solve challenges around um, getting people to rotate crops. Peanuts is actually nitrogen fixing the soil. And so these are people, you know, in those innovation festivals, speed mentoring we can do with each other. This is Oakland. You know, all over the country we moved and we got to work with amazing people. And you see some of the Curve Crew teammates here who we met up with. And one of my favorite moments was when people actually projected Grace Hopper and Ida, you know, on, on the uh, exhibition on your uh, labs. So here's President Obama in the science fair. And he's asking the kids, what did they do? And they made a page turning robot. And he said, how'd you do this? And they said, we had a brainstorming. And he said, really? And then what? We developed some prototypes. So that's what we want everyone to do. Sorry, everyone. We're having some technical difficulties with the internet here at UMRF. The weather has been a bit tragic today here. It's been super stormy, so I'm sure that has everything to do with the internet today. I do apologize. We will make certain that Megan Smith's keynote is uploaded to our YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe to our channel and you will be notified when that video is uploaded. I do want to thank Megan for her keynote, and I also want to make sure that we touch on some of the gems that she threw out there, like what companies can do to increase diversity in tech and to make sure that you're building a crew um, around computer science and computer science education and make sure that everyone understands that we all are playing a part in making sure that tech education is paramount in today's world, in this 21st century. And Megan made some very, great points and I want to make sure that you all get to see that. So we will make sure that that video is uploaded as soon as possible. Thank you. So next I want to introduce our very first honoree for this evening. That is World Quant Predictive. World Quant Predictive WQP is an AI predictions company that delivers highly accurate and industry leading prediction products within weeks allowing customers to see around corners and rapidly solve their business problems. Using WQP's proprietary ML cloud-based platform, Quanto, and its global research network, WQP data scientists create thousands of models quickly using customer and alternative data, finding signals others miss. WQP delivers resilient, real-world, real world, actionable prediction insights from domain experts, which companies can seamlessly integrate and scale across their enterprises. WQP was founded by Igor Tolchinsky. WorldQuant Predictive is a separate entity from WorldQuant LLC, a global quantitative asset management firm. For more information, you may visit WQ Predictive. Dot com. Accepting tonight's inaugural Tech Company of the Year Award on behalf of World Quant Predictive is data scientist Dr. Sadrak Pierre. I'd like to start off by saying thank you very much for this great honor. Recently, much light has been shown on the digital divide in tech. Namely, there is a large education and income gap between those who have access to computers and the internet and those who don't. While many groups have been impacted by the tech divide, communities of color and women are especially affected. 
Corporations can work to foster a more inclusive tech environment for these underserved communities. This can be done through programming and data science boot camps, internship programs, and free educational resources such as video tutorials and articles. Specifically, those individuals and corporations that support educational organizations such as Code Crew, Black Girls Code, and Girls Who Code are making a great effort to help close the tech divide. At WorldQuant Predictive, we are proud to partner with Code Crew to design and offer a rigorous data science bootcamp where we teach foundational statistics and machine learning concepts to students in Memphis and show them how to implement these concepts in code. I want to stress that in order to close the tech divide, we must provide easy access to computer science education for these underserved populations. As the lead instructor of the WorldQuant Predictive Data Science Bootcamp, I am honored to be a part of this movement. I've gotten to know many of the Code Crew students very well, and some students have conveyed that the material we covered in the bootcamp has helped them better understand the material in their university courses. I am very honored to accept the Excite Award of Tech Company of the Year on behalf of WorldQuant Predictive. We are proud to play our part in bridging the tech and digital divide. Thank you. Sadrak, thank you so much for everything that you're doing right now for Code Crew. That after school program is running flawlessly because of you. We're so appreciative of your work as well as our friends at WQP. We're so grateful for your support over this past year and your relationship with Code Crew has been one that I am fond of and so thankful and grateful for. We appreciate your support as well as WQP. Thank you and congratulations on being named the inaugural Excite Awards Tech Company of the Year. And now it is my honor to present to you our next honoree, Rob Carter with FedEx. Rob is the Executive Vice President of FedEx Information Services and Chief Information Officer of FedEx Corporation. He is a member of the Five Person Executive Committee, which plans and executes the corporation's strategic business activities. Rob also serves as co-president and co-CEO of FedEx Services, the shared service entity responsible for sales, marketing, information technology, and customer service. Carter joined FedEx in 1993 and has nearly 40 years of systems development and implementation experience. Carter is responsible for setting the technology direction of the FedEx applications, infrastructure, and networks that provide around the clock and around the globe support for FedEx product offerings. Please join us in honoring Rob Carter as the inaugural Excite Awards CIO of the Year. Take it away. Hello, and thank you for inviting me to this event today. I'm really excited and honored to be receiving the inaugural Excite CIO of the Year Award. Uh, the work that you're doing at Code Crew is really exciting to me. I'm proud of Mecca and the entire team at Code Crew for doing something so important, and that's training up the next generation of technologists. Practical work in coding and application development and the technologies that surround that are critically important to our future at FedEx and to all of the important things going on in the world. When I think about innovation at FedEx, I'm really proud of how that innovation and technology has powered us through this unprecedented year of the pandemic and all of the changes that it brought us. Because we had been working hard on delivering a future through the use of technology, we were prepared, not expecting it to happen, but prepared when the pandemic hit us. The capabilities that we've delivered for e-commerce and to power the next generation of capabilities here at FedEx were super important in helping the world respond to this unbelievable uh, challenge that we all faced together. I'm really proud of the work that you're doing in education to deliver a next generation technologist, a next generation coder, uh, that has the aptitude and capabilities that have been taught through STEM education and a broad outreach to people that really can make a difference in the future. We started supporting 
code crew in 2017 because we believe that the mission of training up the next generation of coders is really important. Thank you again for all of the work that you're doing. Thank you for this honor. And here at FedEx, we're proud to be supporters of Code Crew. Rob, thank you. We're so grateful for the support that FedEx has provided for the past four years. And we're just amazed at the way FedEx has handled everything that has gone on with the global pandemic and just your take charge attitude around getting us vaccines and getting vaccines around the world. We're so thankful for your leadership and for how technology has played a part in ensuring that vaccines that required everything from temperature control to just getting them to logistically rural areas that needed vaccines. We're super thankful for the leadership that FedEx has provided during the pandemic. And we're so grateful to honor you with tonight's CIO of the Year Award. Thank you, Rob. Our next honoree is probably one of my favorites. Um, I'm super glad that we were able to secure Verne Myers as our next honoree for tonight's Excite Awards. Verne is an inclusion strategist, cultural innovator, thought leader, and social commentator, a Harvard-trained lawyer and founder of the Verne Myers Company. Verne was recently named VP Inclusion Strategy at Netflix. In this newly created role, she is helping devise and implement strategies that integrate cultural diversity, inclusion, and equity into all aspects of Netflix operations worldwide. Verne is the author of Moving Diversity Forward, how to go from well-meaning to well-doing, and what if I say the wrong thing? 25 Habits for Culturally Effective People. Her inspiring TED Talk, How to Overcome Our Biases, Walk Boldly Toward Them, has been viewed almost three million times. It is my honor to present the inaugural Excite Award for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion to Verne Myers and Netflix. Congratulations, Verne. Hello, everybody. I'm Brene Myers, and the VP of Inclusion Strategy at Netflix, and I am so thrilled to be here with you and to accept this amazing award. I think that you know, 2020 with the two pandemics of COVID and also racial inequity, especially the understanding of structural racial inequity, has shown a light on the tech and the digital divide. And corporations and companies and organizations like mine, it, it's really imperative um, in this time that we develop a comprehensive strategy for eliminating the barriers and the gaps and the divide that we see uh, in our society. And one way to do that is to play this for the long game. It's not just about you know, activities and programs. It really is about a wholesale cultural shift in companies as they think about how to develop inclusive environments and environments that are representative of the larger society and world that they um, serve. And so I think it's incredibly important for those corporations to also develop very supportive relationships with groups like Code Crew and Black Girls Code and Girls Who Code through, through all of the many, many ways that folks are bringing new people, new talent, because of course, um, we have only begun to scratch the surface uh, without having inclusion where people of all backgrounds can come and thrive and do their best. Uh, we're not going to ultimately do our best as organizations. So I really, really want to thank you for this award. It means everything to us as we continue to try to make a difference and to bridge that digital divide. Please keep up your great work and we will do the same. Thank you. Verne, thank you so much for all you, you are doing and will continue to do at Netflix in the realm of diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
you are why we do what we do and are making sure that underrepresented individuals have a place in tech. And Netflix is leading the way, is a company that is making sure that the numbers that the Caper Center has put out, that they are growing instead of staying where they are. We thank you for your commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and to computer science and technology. Vernay, congratulations on being this year's DEI Person of the Year. Thank you. Next, I'd love to spotlight that last year um, we experienced several losses, but one that really touched the Code Crew family was that of our dear friend, Chris Fields. Last April, we suffered this devastating loss and Chris was our social media manager. And so you can imagine that that hole was one that was ginormous that we had to fill. Chris and Mecca met over 30 years in the hallowed halls of East High School right here in Memphis, Tennessee. We established the Christopher D. Fields Memorial Scholarship to support college students studying computer science in local area colleges. Because of the support and contributions from Chris's family, HR friends, and many of you, Code Crew awarded five scholarships to students this year. Our first scholarship recipient is Ann Wynn. <laughs> Ann currently attends Christian Brothers University and she also serves with Code Crew as a teaching assistant. Next up is Zach Yancey. Zach is currently attending Christian Brothers University. <laughs> Zach has been a longtime volunteer and now TA for Code Crew and we are super thrilled to have Zach as a part of our family. Next up is Joshua Moore, attending the University of Memphis. Josh is such an amazing gift and we're super proud and thankful to have Josh as part of our family as well. Next up is Jamal Muhammad, attending the Lemoyne Owen College. Jamal, congratulations and thank you for everything you do with our students. Next up is Houston Moses. Northwest Mississippi Community College transferring to the University of Memphis. <laughs> Houston, thank you for all of your support and hard work during our after school programs. We're super grateful and thankful for you. Please honor Chris's legacy today by making a donation towards this year's round of scholarships. We'd love to increase the number of students that we're giving scholarships to this year, and you have the ability and the power to help us do just that. If you are a current college student or enrolling this fall as a college student and planning to major in computer science, applications are now being accepted for the Christopher D. Fields Memorial Scholarship at www.code-crew.org. Again, that's www.code-crew.org. Apply today. And now, I have the extreme honor and pleasure of introducing Ray Green, graduate of Code Crew Code School's very first cohort, the Alpha Class. Ray is currently a software engineer at Green Mountain Technology. Ray, take it away. Thank you, Keila. Um, so I'm here to share with you uh, my story uh, with my time at Code Crew and uh, how they have helped me along my journey as a software engineer. Uh, so I attended University of Tennessee for about a year um, and found myself not really liking it. So I ended up driving out and working fast food and retail for a little while. Um, and then I came across the code school um, and I immediately jumped at the opportunity. It sounded like an amazing offering. Uh, they were offering to make people into full-time software engineers in six months. Um, and uh, so I jumped at it and I haven't looked back. They gave me an amazing education in web development, uh, and not only that, but helped me develop myself as a professional through re resume building, through soft skills training, through networking opportunities, the entire suite. Um, and they allowed me to build a resume that you know I was proud to show employers. My time at the code school helped me land a job that increased my income over three times what I was making working at Panera Bread. Um, <laughs> so their impact on my life cannot be understated and their impact on the lives of many others here in, in Memphis cannot be understated. 
Um, and for that, I am forever grateful. And that's why they have earned my eternal uh, gratitude and have turned me into a full-time donor myself. And I encourage all of you to go out and donate to Code Crew and support the good work they do here in Memphis. Ray, thank you so much. Yes, We're so proud of Ray and for all of his accomplishments. Um, he was a part of that very first inaugural class back in 2018. And it's so great. I feel like the proud aunt, big sister, just watching our graduates as, as they continue to grow and land these amazing, phenomenal jobs with amazing tech companies. And so, Ray, thank you for your support. Thank you for your financial support of Code Crew. And thank you for always spreading the computer science gospel. If you've been inspired by the work of Code Crew and the movement we are, st we are shepherding in Memphis and beyond, please donate at www.code-crew.org. Again, that's www.code-crew.org. We also want to thank our sponsors. We have some amazing sponsors this year. The first up is Niantic, the makers of Pokemon Go. Niantic is one of those organizations that's talking the talk and walking the walk when it comes to supporting organizations like Code Crew, and we're so grateful for them and their support this year. Next up is FedEx. As you heard Rob mention, they've been a longtime supporter of Code Crew and the Code Crew Code School. FedEx, thank you so much for sponsoring tonight's event. And last but certainly not least, our friends over at Wonderman Thompson. Wonderman Thompson has provided pro bono digital marketing support for Code Crew for the past two years. We cannot thank them for their support and for their leadership for everything that they've provided us for these past two years. We are a small but mighty team, and so to have a company like Wonderman Thompson supporting, I mean, I'm sorry, like Wonderman Thompson supporting Code Crew and doing it pro bono is amazing and huge for our work because it means we don't have to expand our team. We expand it by having them stand alongside of us. And so tonight, I want to toss it back to Maka. Thank you so much, Keila. Um, <laughs> let me just first say uh, this, this great event was the brainchild of this intelligent uh, young lady right here. And so I just want to give everyone, uh, everyone in the place a round of applause <laughs> for her. And uh, th thank you all so much for, for uh, tuning in this evening. And let me also emphasize again, not only were we all fully vaccinated tonight, but I wanna invite all of you to go get your vaccination. It is so vitally important to uh, public health. Uh, with that said, thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, this was a great event and uh, we'll see you at next year's <laughs> Excite Awards. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night.